Hello everyone, David here. Welcome back to Brick Vault and to Top 10 Mocks of the Week. Yes, I know it has been a little while since the last episode aired, but we are bringing it back now because I personally just love to look at what people are able to create out of bricks each week. I usually see a ton of models every day anyways, so why not show them to you here and let you know my thoughts as a mock designer myself. We at Brick Vault are passionate about LEGO custom creations, that's why we created a web store where you can buy the instructions and parts list for a ton of custom creations yourself, so you can replicate them for your own enjoyment. Just click the link in the video description or visit the website that you see on your screen and let's get started with the video. There have been a ton of cool builds that people posted online this past week, so let's not waste any time and get straight to it. The first model is called Super Yard, M slash Y or Wea. I hope I pronounced that right. It's basically a micro scale super yard and was designed by Zeto Vince on Instagram. By the way, you can find all links to the creations in the video description. What makes this build so cool is that it's basically built upside down. You can see they used aircraft fuselage pieces upside down for the super structure and also for the stand, which is a really neat touch. The ship propellers are flower pieces and it seems like this yard also has an outdoor pool and wooden flooring, which looks super deluxe. The reason why I put this on my top 10 list this week is the technique for the front section though. It comes to a point very nicely but the way the designer was able to accomplish that is just super cool to me. You can see a cross section of the techniques and I can only imagine how many try and errors they must have gone through before making it this perfect. Next up is a creation from a builder who we work with on Brick Vault. It's called Midas Touch by Busker and is basically a golden room. I believe the source material comes from a Greek myth, but I'm not too sure. But just looking at the techniques here, I really like the build for the wall, which uses a ton of these pieces and bar holders in between, which makes for a really interesting look. I would love to take a look inside the wall to see how they managed to achieve this. Just the amount of gold pieces this required is astonishing and I like the contrast with the black sides. Third on my list is this behemoth of a build. It's called the First Church of Otago from the builder Peter Dennison. You can see this build is massive and apparently it depicts a church in New Zealand, which was opened in 1873 and it took the designer six years to complete. The floor is completely snot and the church itself has a ton of cool details like the build for the inner workings of the clock and a few construction workers working on the facade. This reminds me of the Colonial Cathedral a little bit because of all the spiky details and generally this looks like you could film a vampire movie here perfectly. Really imposing stuff. Alright, now coming to a completely different build and build style. This is called the Hemophage and it was built by Space Glove. This is a really unique build with parts that you don't usually see being used too often like the megaphone pieces as feet. I think this model only exists digitally which I don't really like to include usually but the concept was so cool to me. Basically what Google says is that Hemophage is a cell that destroys red blood cells so if this is what this guy can do I'd rather stay away from it. The next mock is a part of a Star Wars collaboration that I recommend you check out yourself on Instagram. This is an Imperial Cargo Depot by Gooby Systems, another builder who we work with. This small diorama was part of the Dark Times collaboration called Antelus. I don't think there are pics of all the builds at once yet, but if you visit their Instagram I'm sure you can find all the individual builds by all the builders. Anyways, this build is obviously inspired by the cargo containers you see in the Battlefront 2 games and I really really like the build for it. What can't be overlooked here is the build for the light pole, which is really innovative and I'm also a big fan of how this build was presented in general. The terrain color on top of the black base contrasts really nicely and I would have loved to see this collab in person at the Bricktastic convention. But let's move on, here we have a plain mock by the builder Gone Big and the images and small modifications come from Mighty Muzuka and it's called the Lockhead P38 Lightning. What I found most interesting here is the angle of the wings. They have been angled forward slightly and I'm sure it has been a pain to work out the techniques for the engines facing forward. This model has been built with fully snub building. I only count 4 studs on the whole model which is really impressive and I would love to swoosh this thing around. 
Not many know this, but I used to build plane mocks myself because I was a big fan of the game War Thunder, so I really enjoy seeing builds like these. Let me know if you would like to see more plane mocks on our web store. This mock is inspired by Season 7 of The Clone Wars and it's a small section of Mandalore built by Brickman Studios. The posing of the minifix is really good and I like that we have a cross section here so we can have a look at the underground sewer system and pipe detailing. I think it's the size of a base plate if I see that correctly so you could theoretically put this in your LEGO city next to your modular buildings. The bronze medal this week for me gets this build right here, it's just called Carnival by the builder Jock Build. I feel like it's staring right into my soul. I love the parts usage here, the gunmetal grey makes for a great contrast to the bright transparent colors. And I like the small detail for the teeth using two gear pieces. This looks like if the themes Bionicle and Elves had a baby and I'm all here for it. I don't think this is from any specific source material. So I can certainly also appreciate the creativity behind the concept. Second place this week is something that really catched my eyes when I scrolled through Instagram because it was made using a bunch of parts or at least it's really inspired by the part selection of the Rose Bouquet set. The builder Scatman Orange didn't give it a name so let me know in the comments how you would name this warrior robot. It has some really impressive detailing in the chest and face area with this old shiny gold crown piece being used suggesting that this could maybe even be a king of some fantasy world. The rose buds are connected everywhere on its body and the designer gave it an axe that uses a ton of the parts of the flower stems. The feet are also really dynamic and yeah, this character just looks plain cool to me. On first place this week is Princess Sapphire, a character build that again I don't think is inspired by any real fantasy worlds, but just was created out of pure creativity. I'm pretty sure everything you see here is real Lego, including the cape piece which should be a parachute piece from an older Lego city line, if I'm not mistaken. I love the color selection, again reminds me of the colors from the elves theme. The crown is really pompous and I like the build for the hair and the eyes using just minifigure hand pieces. Really really cool build. So that's it for this past week, let me know which one of these builds is your personal favorite. Again you can find the links to all the models in the video description. That's also where you can get to our web store that sells a bunch of amazing custom stuff as well. Thank you everyone for watching, don't forget to like or even subscribe if you're new around here and we'll see you next time at Brickvault.